This VizCast is going to look at standing waves on a stretched string. Pause the video for a moment and read the question carefully. Now that you've read the question, you can see that you're being asked to calculate how long the string is, given some information about the mass of the string, the tension in the string, and something about a particular vibration of the string. Let's begin by interpreting this question. Importantly, we have a stretched string and it is fixed at each end, as the question tells us. That tells us that the ends here won't be able to vibrate and they will form nodes in any standing wave that appears upon the string. We've also been given information about the mass of the string, about the frequency of a particular harmonic, and that might allow us to know something about the wavelength if we know the particular harmonic and we're also told the tension force that's in the string and so we might be looking to relate these particular quantities to hopefully find out what the length of the string that's what we're being asked to calculate let's go on to the development stage of our solution where as is often the case a diagram will be really useful let's start off with a diagram of our stretched string we know it's fixed at each end, so I've indicated there with the dots that those are fixed points, unable to vibrate at all. And we're told this string is going to vibrate at a particular frequency at its third harmonic. Now the third harmonic tells us how many anti-nodes we have between each of the nodes. So the third harmonic tells us there's going to be three. So we need to draw a wave on here. It can be as exaggerated as we want, but it needs to indicate the location of the nodes and anti-nodes. So I need to fit three anti-nodes in between here. So there might be my three anti-nodes. Of course I know that my string is vibrating backwards and forwards, so this is really intended to be just a snapshot at some particular point in time. You know this part of the string will be vibrating backwards and forwards with a maximum amplitude um, and these extra nodes in the middle here will not be moving at all and at some intermediate location say here it'll be vibrating backwards and forwards with a smaller amplitude than it does at the anti-node. Importantly if my string has a length L along here this diagram of the third harmonic clearly shows me that I actually get one half wavelength, two half wavelengths, three half wavelengths along the length. So I get three lots of lambda over two that's my half wavelength, that equals the length of the string, or I can rearrange that quite clearly to see that the wavelength of the third harmonic here must be two-thirds the length of the string. I know now that with a wavelength and a frequency, I could indeed determine the speed of this wave, the speed of this standing wave that's moving on this stretched string will always be the frequency times the wavelength, and there's something else that I know about a stretch string and that is that the speed of the wave actually depends upon two physical properties of the stretch string. Namely it depends upon the tension in the string which I'll call F divided by the linear mass density, how much mass per unit length. And in fact it's the square root of that ratio. Remember that mu there is the mass divided by the length. Now I have several relationships here and what I might like to do in my evaluation step is to understand how those different relationships can be put together so that I can calculate the length of the string. The first thing to think about here is that I know this frequency times this wavelength, that's going to be the speed of the wave, must equal the square root of the force divided by the mass per unit length. And remember I can write the wavelength in terms of the length of the string. I can also write the mass per unit length in terms of the length of the string. So if I substitute those in, I now have a frequency. My wavelength, remember here, is two-thirds the length of the string for the third harmonic, and this will equal the tension divided by the mass per unit length. And again, it's the square root of that ratio. I should be able to rearrange this now in a couple of steps. Two-thirds the frequency times the length will equal, you can see with this expression here, I'll get the tension times the length divided by mass. Now I can square both sides to get rid of the square root 
and in fact I will end up with two-thirds the frequency squared. I'll leave that there for the moment times the length squared on the left hand side will equal the tension times the length divided by the mass on the right hand side. This length squared one of the powers of L cancels with the other L on the other side and when I rearrange this I actually end up with the length of my string being equal to when I turn this around it will be 3 divided by 2F all squared multiplied by the tension divided by mass and of course these are all values that I have now so I can just plug them in 3 divided by 2 times the frequency and the frequency was 120 Hertz and we need to square that multiplied by the tension 78 Newtons divided by the mass and we'll put that in kilograms so it's 0 0.045 kilograms and when we do that calculation we find we end up with a length of 0 0.27 meters so that's the answer to the question that was asked in this problem the length of the string with those particular properties is 27 centimeters now it would be good to do a little bit of assessment on our answer here one thing that we can do is we can look at calculating the velocity of this particular standing wave and we can do it two different ways we can do it using the frequency and the wavelength and we can do it using the tension and the mass per unit length and we can do both of those now because we have a length so we can actually calculate the wavelength here uh, it's simply going to be two-thirds times the length that we've calculated 0 0.27 that tells us we have a wavelength of 0 0.18 meters and that allows us to calculate say using one method our speed being frequency times wavelength and again we know our frequency is 120 Hertz times the wavelength that we just calculated using the length of the string and that comes out to be about 22 meters per second and then to check that that all is consistent with our problem let's try calculating the speed using the square root of the tension divided by the mass per unit length again we know the tension here is 78 newtons and I can now divide by the mass per unit length well I'll just write there the mass is 0 0.045 and the length is 0 0.27 meters I need to take the square root of all of that and when I do that calculation nicely enough I also get 22 meters per second so that tells me that this length that I've calculated for the string is indeed consistent with all of the information that's been given